Welcome to the Archivematica 1.0 screencast. Today I'm going to process this set of images. So you'll see here that we have eight um, of multiple formats. Um, and then within this nested directory, we have a couple of more samples of digital objects to run through Archivematica. Um, so in the Archivematica web-based dashboard, we'll start with a standard transfer type. We'll name our transfer, and you can name it here whatever you want or whatever your policy is at your repository. You'll assign an accession number, however you do that at your repository. Um, you do not have to assign the succession number. You can leave it blank if you need to. And then we'll browse to the directory where we have our sources for transfer in Archivematica. So here I'm going to drill down into my sample transfers, and there is my transfer called images and I will click Add, and that brings it into the Archivematica dashboard. I can add, if I choose to do so, another set of digital objects from another source or the same source if I choose to, and continue to do that until my transfer is ready to begin. Once the transfer is ready to begin, hit Start Transfer, this big green button, and your transfer digital objects are moved into the microservice workflow in the Archivematica dashboard. And just while that's moving over, I'm going to do a quick tour for you. So you'll see across the top here, you have transfer tab, your ingest tab, archival storage, preservation planning, access and administration. So these are the Archivematica tabs and we'll look closer at those later. So now your transfer screencast has moved into the dashboard. You'll see this microservice approved transfer is waiting for a decision. And the way you know that is this bell right here. So we'll click down in this drop down menu and approve the transfer. And this will continue to move it through the microservices. You'll notice in Archivematica, we have several areas where you need to make a decision to continue processing in Archivematica. Um, if you choose to do so in the administrative tab, you can change your processing configuration so that you can skip some of those decision points or pre-configure them to have one consistent decision every time. So now back to our transfer tab where we have yet another decision to make. And in this case, now that we've already run through some of the major Archivematica microservices, including verifying our transfers checksums or assigning them um, and assigning file UUIDs, also scanning for viruses and cleaning up any names so that the operating system can process the digital objects. Um, it's time to select our file format identification command. This is a change for 1.0 that we can choose now between FIDO identification or file extension identification. You can also choose to skip file identification at this point if you would like to do file identification instead in the ingest tab of the dashboard. In this case, I'm going to choose to use FIDO, which is based on pronom IDs to identify formats. So now you'll see that the microservices in the transfer workflow are continuing. Characterize and extract metadata is often one of the microservices that takes the longest amount of time because we run FITS and FITS um, has in the past taken a while, but one of our developers has adjusted it so that it moves quite a bit faster. In the meantime, I'm going to show you the preservation planning tab, which shows our format policy registry in your local machine. So this registry can be updated from fbr.archivematica.org, which is the official public format policy registry that Artifactual Systems maintains. And this is where you'll find all of your different rules for normalization to access and to preservation in Archivematica. You can also change these rules or add your own new rules if you choose to do so for formats. You can add new formats as well, new format groups, or change the format groups in your local system. And you can add new identification tools, rules, and commands if you choose to do so. Instructions for all of this are on our wiki. So again, back to the transfer dashboard, where now the characterize and extract metadata microservice has completed. And now we're just waiting to create our SIP and move into the ingest workflow. 
So in this drop-down menu, we could either send to the transfer backlog if we choose, or we can reject the transfer at this stage if we realize we've made some kind of mistake, or we can create one single SIP and continue processing. I'm going to choose to create one single SIP and continue processing, but I'll show you where you would pull up from the backlog if you need to. So now what we're doing is we are packaging this as a SIP and moving it into the ingest tab um, where our ingest workflow begins. When you click on the ingest tab, first you're reminded that you must add descriptive and or rights metadata prior to normalization. So before you do this decision point, you must add your metadata. And the way you do that is by clicking on this icon here. And here you see that you can add your premise 2.0 rights. You can do copyright, statute, license, donor, policy, or another basis. And then the second page of rights is adding any of the acts that you might have associated with those bases. And then back at our metadata page, you can also add Dublin Core metadata. And here I'll just add a quick title. And I'll add myself as the creator. And this metadata will apply at the level of the SIP. I'll click Create. And you'll see you can even edit or delete that if you choose to. So now we'll go back to the ingest workflow. And again, we get that reminder every time we go into the ingest tab of the dashboard. And we're going to choose to normalize for, for preservation and for access. Archivematica always keeps the original object, but if you normalize for preservation, you also get a preservation copy. And if you choose to normalize for access, you also get your DIP for upload into your access system. You'll see here there are also other choices that you can choose at this stage, um, including normalize manually, which means if you have, for instance, a proprietary tool locally that you'd like to use to do your normalization, you can do that at this stage, or you can do it at the beginning of transfer, which you'd find instructions for in our user manual. And then you bring it back into the system to process through to its AIP and DIP. So we're going to choose to normalize for preservation and access. And now what's happening is those rules that I showed you in the FPR, which you can see in the preservation planning tab, are being applied to the objects based on how they were identified. You'll also see here that if you choose to send your transfers to backlog, this search is where you'll pull them up and you'll see in this drop down, you can even choose an accession number. So for instance, if you have multiple transfers under one accession number, you could pull them up here and transfer them if you like as one SIP, for instance. So now our normalization has completed and we can actually review the results of this normalization in two ways. First, we can click on this report, which opens in a new tab and shows us the success or failure of all of our processing. And then we can also choose to review in a new tab by looking into the directory itself. So here, this is our SIP with its UID appended. If you expand that, you can go into the dip and you can look at the objects that have been created for access with their UUIDs in the title. And you can also look at the objects that were created for preservation also with their UUIDs in the title. And as you'll see here, you'll also have the original file because that's, as I mentioned before, also in the AIP. Had you done any manual normalization, it would be in this manual normalization folder and divided between access and preservation copies that you may have made. And you'll see too that our original hierarchical structure is maintained in the AIP. So we have our top level directory and then you have another directory of pictures, which when you expand that, you'll see the original contents of that directory and their preservation copies as well. So again, let's, that looks good. Let's go back to the dashboard and we are going to approve that. We can also reject it or redo it at this point if we choose to do so. So for instance, if you wanted to redo and do something manually, you might want to do that. If you saw the results weren't up to your liking and you wanted to redo on one of the objects.
So now Archivematica is preparing your DIP for upload into your access system and it's preparing your AIP for upload into your storage system. Your storage for archival information packages has been arranged using your storage service. In your administration tab, if you go to general, you'll see the location of your storage service. In Archivematica 1.0, you must have the storage service configured and the instructions to do so are on the Artifactual Wiki in the instructions for installation of 1.0. And this is the storage service, just so you know kind of what it looks like. It has pipelines, spaces, locations, and packages, and then an administrative tab where you can change and adjust your users. Um, let me click on packages here. And in this package window, you can actually see all of the AIPs that are actually stored and which pipeline they originated in and where they are currently. If we go back to the dashboard in ingest, our AIP should be ready for upload and our dip should also be ready for upload. So first we'll store our ape. We can review our AIP in the same way that we can review our normalization results. So if you expand this store AIP, here's the AIP again with its UUID appended to it. You can download this 7-zip file from here and look at the contents of the actual AIP. And you can also, um, something I like to do, is validate the METS. And so if you click on this METS here, it opens in a new tab. This is also a good way to review your METS if you're just curious about the METS and premise metadata in Archivematica. So you can scroll down through that and you can search for anything you'd like. You could also choose validate and this takes you to a website that validates your premise and METS metadata. Note that if you've included any premise 2.0 rights or restrictions metadata, this will not validate properly because the validator has not been updated. And we'll go back to that in a minute. So we will go back to the ingest tab. And once we decide that that AIP looks good to us, we'll go ahead and store the AIP. And it's about to give us some options for where to store that. In this case, we've only set up one AIP storage location. However, you may have several locations that you've set up using storage service and you would select that here. And here you'll see, let's go back to the validation results and we'll see well-formed, valid, conform supremacy and METS best practice. And we're also ready to upload our DIP. Now we've already created in, I, in ICA Atom 1.3.1, which comes packaged with Archivematica, a font level um, description called artifactual sample font. So what we need to do is copy the stub artifactual sample font, go back to our Archivematica dashboard, and choose to upload the DIP to Atom. You'll note that you can also upload to Archivist Toolkit and Content DM and instructions for doing that are in our user manual online. So here, this is asking for the permalink of the target description. That's that stub that I just copied. I'm going to paste it in and select Upload. You'll see too that our store AIP has completed successfully. If we go into the archival storage tab of the dashboard now, we'll see our AIP and its title its UUID, its size, when we stored it. And you can also, if you choose to do so, request deletion at this point, at which time whoever administers your storage service will be able to approve that delete request or deny it. Now, when we go back to ingest, we'll also see that our upload dip has completed successfully. If you go into your access tab now, you'll see the AIP name again, its associated dip URL, when we uploaded it, and its status, and also the ability to delete. If we go back to Adam and refresh this page, now we'll see all of our digital objects in our access system from our DIP. And if you click on this file that we created using our Dublin Core, Archivematica screencast file, you'll also see the rest of the metadata 
here you'll remember I created myself um, as a creator in Dublin Core and you can view that here. So now we've completed the process of running a set of digital objects through Archivematica and creating an archival information package and sending it to storage location and creating a DIP and sending that to an access system. That's Archivematica 1.0. We've got several changes and I will follow this screencast up with more screencasts of some of our special new features. If you're interested in our new features, however, you can also find out about them on the archivematica.org wiki.